am going to um, try to do some cooking with you today. I've not made this for years. I used to make it as a kid. It's soda bread. It's low fat and it's really, really easy to make. There's no yeast and the method I use is no kneading. Um, so let's get started then. Now the first thing we need is a bowl a set of scales to weigh or cups if you want to use cups. I will add the conversion um, to the recipe as well. I'm using um, white self-raising flour. Uh, you can use self-raising or plain. You just slightly adjust the amounts of uh, baking soda by carbonate. There's, there's about a million recipes all over the internet but this is the one I'm going to use. I'm going to use a little bit of salt. This is salt in the bag. And a little bit of sugar and I've got some um, baking powder here as well and I've got my spoons and things also in it, um, it's traditionally made with buttermilk but I'm going to use milk and some natural yoghurt as well so um, I'm just going to go and get that now and I'll be right back okay I'm back, I've got the milk now and uh, the yoghurt let's see what else I forget to bring while I'm doing it um, this is Sainsbury's organic, less than 2% fat, probiotic yoghurt, natural. Um, I don't think it really matters whether it's probiotic or not, but anyway. The reason why they use buttermilk and um, I'm using yoghurt is because it creates a better reaction. It's to do with acidity and pH and that creates the reaction which creates the carbon dioxide which makes the bread rise, obviously and you'll be quite surprised at how much it does rise in the oven uh, when it's cooking. Now what I've done is I've started to preheat the oven and I've preheated that to 190 um, on the fan oven and if you use uh, centigrade it's 190 centigrade or 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, obviously it depends on your type of cooker, you know what sort of temperature you're going to heat it to. And you need to you need to preheat that to um, for at least you know probably half an hour. It needs to be really 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 hot um, and preheated before you start. Anyway, here we go. So I'm going to put my scales on here, and um, I've centered them to zero, and I'm going to weigh out um, 450 grams of my self-raising flour. Give the scales a minute to adjust. So that's 450th flour. Okay, I'll just move the scales out of the way because I don't need them now. To that, I'm going to add a teaspoon of sugar. I've got my measuring teaspoon here. This is just cast the sugar, it doesn't matter uh, what kind of sugar you use. And in fact, you don't even have to put the sugar in if you don't want to, but I'm going to do that. Okay, so that's a teaspoon of sugar. Oh, and a, a little thrifty tip for you now, um, to keep anything out of your um, sugar and flour and other things in the cupboard, I bought these, um, just the, basically just cheap clothes pegs, and I turn over the top a few times and I clip it like that and I never have any problems with stuff going off. And the salt. I'm going to put about half a teaspoon of salt in because I, I don't think it needs much salt. Okay, and the baking powder. And I'm going to put three teaspoons of this in. You have to be careful with the baking powder and um, bicarbonate of soda or, or baking soda, whatever it is you use, because if you put too much in, then it's having a little bit of a metallic taste and not being very nice. Now, some people say to sieve it at this point, but I'm not going to do that. You don't have to. Just give it a really, really good mix around so that all the ingredients are distributed. Whoops, all down your top. <laughs> no, distributed evenly and mixed together. Um, yeah, so give it a really, really good mix at this stage. And get, get, you know, get some air and fluff into it as well, because all this helps to rise. 
the way the soda bread works is, um, you know, it can vary on humidity, um, the absorbency of the flour, the altitude that you cook at. There's lots of factors that can, you know, make a difference on it. Anyway, when you've done it and you've sort of just mixed it all up, what you do then is you make what they call a well. So basically you get your spoon and you just sort of go like that and make like a little hole in the middle, like that. I'm going to use about half a pot of yoghurt and then I'm going to use the rest um, skim milk. Actually I think I'll use the whole pot of yoghurt. So that's 150 grams of yoghurt, but it doesn't really matter. Like I say, these amounts are very adjustable. So I'll put the yoghurt in and I'll top it up with milk and I'm just using 0.1% um, fats um, skimmed milk. So I'm going to make this up to 200 mils. Okay, I'm going to give that a good mix. Again, I'll try not to get it all over myself. <laughs> really, I should be wearing an apron. So, um, while I'm mixing this, I'll just sort of talk to you a little bit more about soda bread. There's two ways you can cook, well there's more than two, but the two traditional ways of cooking it are in the oven and that tends to be called a cake, um, soda bread, and the other way is falls and what you need then is um, a hot stone or a griddle, you know, or something similar on your stove top and you cook them on the stove top basically uh, rather than in the oven. Um, there's some really good videos on YouTube if you want to have a look at that. I'm not 100% convinced that this is going to work anyway, but we'll see. And I'm giving it a go. Okay. So now we've got our yogurty milk. And what we're going to do now is you pour some into the well. Don't put all of it in just in case. And then just I just flick in to the middle from the sides like that, going all around the bowl. Can you see? and then give it a good mix and what you want is sort of like a bitty texture on it okay. and as I say you can adjust the amount of um, fluid as is needed it doesn't matter if it's a really really sticky dough to be honest because um, it'll, it'll work just as well and if not better when you cook it so I don't, um, I don't know if I said at the beginning, did I say that I'm actually heating a ceramic casserole dish in there? One of the thin metal kinds. Um, there's a method for making bread called the no-knead method. I mean yeast bread, you know, or any bread. And I have heard that you can make soda bread like this too. Right, I've given that quite a good mix now. And um, I'll just try and show you the texture of it. It's not, it's not going to show up very well because... I'll just turn this light off for a second. Hopefully you'll be able to see. It's like um it's still it's it's far too dry at the moment. What you want is these bits here, you want it all to be sort of like that. So I'm gonna add some more fluid. And possibly I'll need to add more, who knows? It doesn't really matter. So I'll give it another mix. I always recommend that you sort of measure it into the jug and do it, add it gradually though rather than just getting your giddy hand in and doing it that way. Oh, this is coming together nicely now. And it smells really nice, it smells nice and yogurty. <laughs> okay. I'm going to add a bit more milk. That's another 100 mils in there, and I've just added about half of it, so 250 so far. I mean, if you really make it too sloppy, you can just always chuck a little bit of flour in, but I wouldn't worry about it being sort of too sticky or too sloppy. A sticky dough is often better, as I say. You just keep giving it a good mix so that the texture's even.
what you've got to remember is the minute you add the um, milk, buttermilk, or whatever you're adding to the um, mixture, the chemical reaction's starting. So, um, you know, every minute that goes by is a bit of time wasted on the process of the uh, carbon dioxide production. Okay, that seems great now. Actually, just add a little bit more. I like my dough to see sticky. Now you can either turn this out onto a lightly floured surface now and give it a light shaping and a knead, or you can just chuck it straight in the pot. Now bear with me, I am going to get the pot. So this is the pot. It's just a ceramic. And the lid, you have to heat the lid also. And they're on a bake. Right, I'm just going to give this a light knead in the bowl just to make sure everything's incorporated in. So treat it the way you would treat pastry, you know, if you over mix pastry it ends up, you know, going hard and unpleasant. Okay. And it's supposed to have a really flaky open sort of texture. It's not supposed to be a perfect, beautiful looking loaf. It's a rustic loaf. Um, traditionally this used to be made on a fire in a pot or on a hot stone, so, you know, it's probably what they call artisan bread now. So I'm going to chuck this into the thing, and if you look, it's just a rough looking bread. <laughs> I'm going to flatten that down slightly. And what I'm going to do now is I've got a really, really sharp knife, and I'm going to make a deep slit in it. You're supposed to go virtually to the bottom because without this slit, it cannot bloom up and rise. Okay. Remembering that the lid is hot as well, I'm going to put the lid on, put this back in the oven. Now I'm going to set the timer, I'm going to go and sit down and have a nice cup of coffee. So I'll see you in a bit. And I'm going to get the bread out and have a little look at it. So I don't know how it's going to be, so, um, and it's going to be very hot, so I hope I'm alright. tray on the side. Right, I'm going to lift the lid off, which is also very, very hot. Whoa! And it's steaming. Well, it looks good. Well, it looks good. Just ignore, if you can hear that beeping in the background, I've got a very critical, um, when I mean critical, I don't mean serious, I mean a criticising my cook here. I'm going to just give it a little bash with a spoon because that can, well it sounds hollow, I'll give you a little look, oh, that's my bread, a big deep cross as you can see, I don't know what it's going to taste like, I'll let you know. <laughs> So I'm putting this on the rack to cool, I'm going to cut a tiny piece off it just to try, I don't know I'm going to do this without burning myself anyway, can you hear that, okay, ooh, can you see that, right. it's very hot, it looks it looks right, if, if, if there's any way of it looking right. I don't know what it's going to taste like.
it's nice. <laughs> it's really nice. So I'd say that was a success. I don't think I've got as much rise in it as I'd like. I don't know if you can see. It's a nice um, fluffy consistency. I don't know if I expected it to get bigger. It's quite a dense bread. But you know what? It's good. So I definitely recommend you try this. And it's completely low fat and really easy to do. You can do other things like throw raisins or cherries or, you know, other things in it. Make it a bit more cakey. Anyway, so I'm going to go now. I might have a slice of this and a cup of tea. Alright then, I'll see you soon. Bye!